Hello and welcome to The Station, a podcast put on by the Arkansas Business Engine. I am Ty King, the Director of Marketing. I'm joined with my colleague, Whitney Hickerson, our local copywriter. Say hello. Hey. Hey. And today we are joined by an esteemed member of the insurance agency. Uh, what would you call it? The insurance uh, industry? It, it is the insurance industry. industry. Okay, there we go. Andy Fleming. And to tell you a little bit about Andy... He was born and raised in Greenbrier, Arkansas, currently lives in Benton, Arkansas with his wife, Jessica, and his six children, um, who are between the ages of two and 13. That's right. Okay. Uh, you are Dave Ramsey coordinator and a member of such organizations such as Toastmasters. Um, you started in the insurance business in March of 2016 with Farmers Insurance uh, as an agency owner, and you've been with Fraser Insurance Agency since September of 2019. Just nice. hit my one year mark there a couple of go. weeks ago. Yeah. So that's that's four years or a little bit over four years that you've been in the insurance in, uh, industry itself. So yeah, tell us a little bit about yourself. If I knew then what I know now, Ty, sure. I would have been in insurance a long time ago. There wouldn't have been this working in the nuclear field all over the United States, mm-hmm. you know, while leaving the wife and children at home. I could have been home every night. So insurance has been good to me. It's been good to my family. It's had its ups and downs. COVID's had its ups and downs, as we all know. So mm-hmm. I can't complain. I would do it all over again in the insurance industry. You were telling us before the show that COVID's actually made a positive impact towards your workload in the industry itself. Positive is actually an interesting word. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely doubled, if not tripled, our workload. Sure. Because people who are insured with an independent agency, we're brokered with about 15 different companies, right? And so if people feel like their premiums are getting a little bit too much Mm. or too high, home, auto, or whatever line of business it is, they know that they can call the agency or their agent and we can do the shopping for you. That way they don't have to call all of these different people and different phone numbers and give out all of their information to all of these people that they've never met. You can just call your agent and say, hey, who else do you have out there? Sure. Things have changed, you know. What can we do to bring my premiums down? And if it's not by making some coverage changes or changing some deductibles, we can always look at other companies for you. Absolutely. So you're able to find the best price no matter what the company is that you're right. you're looking at. Exactly. That's pretty awesome. And so uh, how has, uh, I guess, you know, having insurance, how does that benefit you? Is it any different during COVID than it is uh, in any other time of a person's life? Like, does it benefit them more to have it now than, I mean... Because you may be staying at home, maybe less driving, and so your insurance for you know your car may not make as much sense if you're just staying at home a lot. But also, you still have your homeowner's insurance. You've got your you know uh, you even offer pet insurance. That's right. Like, so, is any like uh, any of the different insurances that you offer that have like escalated in like need as opposed to any other time? The companies will definitely take into consideration the amount of miles that you drive, for mm. example, because you're not traveling back and forth from work anymore. They're, they were being a lot more lenient on the billing side of things due to COVID. So if you've lost your job or if your hours have been cut back due to COVID, then they will work with you a lot easier on that. There's been moratoriums out. Things are starting to look a lot better now. But by at any time ty as long as you don't let your insurance lapse no matter if there's a global pandemic going on or not Mm -hmm. then all you have to do is either call your agent or your company and they will work with you because if you just let it lapse then it's going to be hard to get insurance again in the future and then even if you can they're going to see that lapse in your recent past and then your premiums are going to be higher anyway so oh wow all it's all about communication yeah it's all connected too so that's right (laughs) Ty tells me that you're in a lot of, you know, local professional and networking organizations. Is that kind of how you built the foundation of growing your business through building all these connections in the community? It's definitely helped. Being out in the face of the public and meeting new people, just like meeting you guys. I met Ty probably a few years ago now. Mm -hmm. Ty and I have done some work together. But with all of the others, it's a lot of personal referrals. And if I do a good job for you or you or whoever... You're going to remember that. Right. And the next time you hear somebody needs auto insurance or they're unhappy with their rates or they're unhappy with their agent, then, like, hey, I know a guy. You know, he, he's who I use. That's been the positive impact so far this year, especially since I've been over at the Frazier Insurance Agency. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And like you started with Farmers and now you're with Frazier, but like 
Andy Fleming himself is his own brand uh, as a person because, I mean, you bring a lot of you know, positivity with you. I've never heard you really talk negative about anybody else or anything. And so you like you try to bring whoever you're around, you try to bring them up and you really, you right. really do that. And it's like it's memorable. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're not always going around and be like, hey, well, I got the best insurance quotes. You don't really <laughs> you advertise that when people present the opportunity. Um, but when it's like personal, I come up to you and I'm meeting Andy, you know, uh, you don't really bring it up. You right. just maybe hand a card and be like, hey, if I can never do anything for you, here's this. And so uh, I think those are, those are the best networking uh, skills sure. that you can possibly have. Investing in people rather than investing in whatever's going to give you a dollar in your pocket. You That's know? right. I mean, so I don't want to be that guy. You know, sure. Don't, don't go talk to that Andy guy. All he talks about is insurance. <laughs> yeah, right. you know? yeah. I want to know, how's your mom and them yeah. type deal? <laughs> exactly. You know? how, how's, your, how's the kids? You know, you're making it through COVID and things like that because it's not always about work, work, work. Right. You know, there's so much more to life than just that. And I know that. That's how I was brought up as well. So Exactly. Well, yeah, you just, you were just saying when you introduced yourself that you used to work in the nuclear industry Mm -hmm. and you have all these kids and you've got your wife at home. So now that you're, you've got a career where you're at home more, you know, but there's still a lot going on. There's still a lot of events and activities. How are you finding the balance? You know, it's, Kind of like when that thing where just being here is a lot better than it was before, but you still can get in that habit of just over committing for work related things. How do you kind of find out what you need to do and what you need to say no to to maintain that balance for your family? Probably with COVID, it's a little bit less, but there's still, I was on Zoom meeting last night, you know, I, there's now, and I have to like, there's all these things, there's Zoom meetings in the evenings, I have to choose which ones I'm going to go to and which ones right. I'm not because I can't, you know, I've got kids and stuff at home too. Mm-hmm. And what I've had to do is after it's too late, like <laughs> after I'm already overcommitted, it's like, oh my gosh, I can't handle all of this. I'm too stressed out because if I'm not careful, I will be in this group and this group and this group. It's like, oh, by the way, I have a full-time job. Well, it's the full-time job that pays the bills. Yeah. Not being a, a coordinator for Dave Ramsey, which I will sure. always do, and not being a, you name it, being a Toastmaster, mm-hmm. you know. But those help me in other areas of my life, which also positively affect me in the insurance field as well. So finding that balance for me has just been after I've already overcommitted, and then I've got to find out what I'm going to cut back or cut out, which I've had to do. Yeah, I've yeah. totally been there, too. Oh, yeah. You're just, all of a sudden, you're like, wow, I've just been spinning a plate after plate yep. after plate after plate, and everything's about to fall down. You know yeah. what they say about hindsight, <laughs> and that's why, because it's crystal clear. All right. Yep. Yeah, I can't even imagine having uh, six children at home and a wife, plus doing your, your Toastmasters and Dave Ramsey coordinator and... Your Fraser Insurance, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, you've got several full time jobs that you're doing all at once. So, <laughs> I, do. I, I don't do. know. So, how do you balance, uh, I guess, family life, home life, uh, breaking yourself away? It, is it hard to like get yourself out of the mentality of doing business and be like, okay, I need to forget about everything else that's going on to just focus on my kids right now? We're going to go play a board game or something. It can be very hard at times. Yeah. I will be honest with you, it can because. And to answer your question, the way that I balance that out is mm-hmm. instead of just showing up work at 8 o'clock, you know, 8.15 or whatever, and leaving by 4.45 or 5 o'clock, I get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, every morning. And that's thanks to the nuclear field. We would have to get up early to start our 12-hour shift mm-hmm. early. Mm-hmm. And so even in the insurance field, I'll get up early. I'll get to work early. That way I can be done with or close to done with what I have going on and what I need done by the end of that day so that I can actually clock out even in my head because there's been times even on my way home it's about a 30 minute drive I'm still calling customers I've answered emails voice to text is always a good thing I've continued to work on my way home and one thing that I don't want to happen is is after I do get home and my wife and children are there and we want to have dinner together or we want to watch a movie together the last thing I want to do is be checking my emails or responding to emails and text messages and phone calls because if I'm not careful that can happen I feel like that's for me one of the hardest parts is because we have our work with us everywhere we go. At our fingertips. Yeah. And you know, you're just sitting there trying to have a, you know, enjoy a movie with your kiddo or something. And all of a sudden there's emails coming through. And you know, it's Saturday afternoon. I have have to remind myself sometimes, you know, it's Saturday. I I don't have to be doing this. Like, you know, they can wait until Monday. It's going to be okay. Because you have that. It's like, it's there. You know, I need to, I need to respond to them. I need to let them know what's going on. But you know, there's kind of just setting those boundaries for yourself and mm-hmm. saying like, no, I, I, I'm going to, this time is set aside for my family. 
for me, it's like it's, it's automatic. You know what I mean? It's, I don't ever have my sound turned on, but I'll have my phone in my pocket or something, and I'll feel the vibration. And it's mm-hmm. just like I don't even think about it. It's just I pull it out, and before I know, I'm already looking at another message, and I'm yep. You know, I go down that rabbit hole and just start chasing it down, and I forget about everything else I was just doing. And, and then. So, 30 minutes has gone by, sometimes yeah. longer. Yeah. And you look up and it's yeah. time for bed. And you know, yeah. the other night I got home from work, it was about seven o'clock. And on a school night, we put our kids to bed at eight. Mm-hmm. So I felt like by the time I got home and was able to change clothes and get a bite to eat, suddenly it was time to start getting ready for bed. And yeah. then we put the kids down at eight o'clock. We got the kids down and I looked at my wife and I was like, I feel like I just got home and said hi to my children, kissed them goodnight and put them to bed so mm-hmm. that I can do everything all over again the next day. So. Yeah. It's, and it's not just the insurance industry. I'm not knocking insurance at all. It's it's with anything. I've seen people in my position in other fields as well struggle with the same thing. But at least we're, if I forget, my wife will quickly remind me, hey, you know, you're at home now. You know, you need to switch over into work mode or home mode or whichever. So right. Absolutely. We're getting it figured out the longer and longer we do it. That's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it yeah. takes time and experience. Hindsight. <laughs> exactly. It's not a class that you can take and learn everything about. So Unfortunately, but you're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. It's not like that. So you, uh, you graduated from Greenbrier. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what made you make the big move from Greenbrier, Arkansas, all the way to North Little Rock? Or to Benton. Or Benton. Either one. I mean, you're working in North Little Rock and, yeah. and, and living it's in Benton. kind of diverse. Well, it helps that we are insurance agents for the entire state of Arkansas. Mm-hmm. And so when I was raised and then I graduated in Greenbar back in 1998, go Panthers. <laughs> then the nuclear field came years after that. Uh, my first wife and I, we divorced. I was on the road with the nuclear field. It was by accident. And I'm not sure we've got enough time today to talk about what happened, yeah. but there is a, I accidentally bumped into this girl that I'm married to now yeah. and she lives in Benton. So to keep a long story short, yeah. I now live in Benton. <laughs> you see what I mean? Sure. So as long as mama's happy. But we've all got it worked out now. Everybody gets along, and uh, that's how it happened. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, you stay pretty busy. I do. And so I'm, I'm sure like moving towards a, a you know, larger population area probably helps in your, in your business, and especially your field and what you're doing. You know oh, I mean? yeah. Not, not to say insurance agents and Greenbrier can't prosper, but probably nothing like it is in Little Rock or the Benton area, you know what I mean, with the higher populations. so That's true, too. Yeah. So but it's uh, all about word of mouth and referrals, just like we were saying a minute exactly, ago. Exactly, exactly. So building those network mm. connections and building on that and, like I said, previous uh, That's right. business interactions. And if you do a good job for someone, they're going to, you know, word of mouth advertising, mm-hmm. they're going to tell somebody else. Or they see something on Facebook or social media, you know what I mean, looking for mm-hmm. Who can get me a good rate on you know house insurance and be like okay well i know somebody because i use this guy and maybe for some other kind of insurance that right. they hired you for you know what i mean uh, it happens sort of, every day exactly and then yep. they're like well he can probably get you a good rate for something yep. well and it makes sense if you're doing so much so dependent on word of mouth referrals to be where like this the more dense population there's some jobs that you can do and you can do it from anywhere like the more technology expands and especially with covid we've kind of tested this out more of like there's not, you know, there's a lot that can be done from anywhere from home Mm -hmm. and you don't, and there's actually a a trend uh, more towards rural communities because, you know, people are realizing that, oh, I can work from home and I don't have to pay big city prices. So the people are coming just kind of throughout the country going into more rural areas to get away from the big city and the big city prices. But There's a lot of industries where it just really does depend still on being in that city center, which I, Mm -hmm. and you know, and you've, which can be difficult, I guess, during COVID when you're not able to get out in front of people, you're still doing some Zoom networking and things like that. But, you know, you depend a lot on people getting out and about interacting with each other so that they're having those conversations and being able to give those referrals. So that's a kind of an interesting dynamic there. Very much so, even to the point to where even if you're in a small town, and I don't really consider Greenbrier a small town, but compared to Little Rock, North Little Rock, yeah, right? definitely mm-hmm. smaller. In the insurance field, we are brokered with all of these different companies. But the cool thing about that is, is it's not just, hey, we've got 15 companies for you. Well, there's a reason why, because each company will take different variables into consideration when they're calculating your annual premiums. Mm -hmm. So where one company may weigh more on your driving history, 
you know, to drive your premiums up, then the next company may be more about your, your military. You know, they're heavy on discounts, for example. Mm-hmm. Or maybe they look at your credit score or your credit history. Sure. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So just because with one company you have a high premium doesn't mean that the other 10 companies that we've got are going to be just as high. That There's a huge range. Ty, if I was to run your insurance quote right now, home or auto, you would probably see a range anywhere from, say, $75 a month for your auto all the way up to 200 I mean, I don't know what your credit scores and your driving history right. looks like, but I mean, it's just, if I give you uh, one quote, well, the next one's probably going to be $200 a month cheaper. So that's the saying, cool thing about it. Are you saying that you couldn't look at somebody and tell what their credit score no, is? No, I'm just saying that's, that's why there's so many different ones. And the cool thing about it versus being captive when I was with a captive company is, is when I worked for farmer's insurance or, or anybody, then if you came to me and said, hey, I need an auto insurance quote. Sure, Ty, I can get you an auto insurance quote. And I can do it quickly. If you like it, maybe we can do business together. Mm. But if you don't, well, then what? I can get you a quote from that one company. Now I can get you a quote from all of these different ones because of since they take all of these different variables into consideration when calculating premium. So that's the cool thing about it, no matter where in the state you're from. And I say that because they take into consideration where you live, Mm. your zip code, not just your driving history or your credit history and things like that. So it's pretty cool how it works. It's very interesting. It definitely is. Mm-hmm. So it seems like a lot of work too for you to be uh, moving numbers and info information about people around just to try to get quotes. And you may or may not get them as a, as a client, like you said. There's been a few, but not very often. Yeah. So if somebody, I'll just go ahead and throw this out there. If somebody comes to me and they're like, you know, I'm currently with, you name it, any captive company, mm-hmm. and my rates are too much, and they can't do anything about it, right? Sure because I don't have any other companies. And they call me, they're like, can you beat that price? Well, I don't know you, I've never met you, but probably. Yeah. Because I've got so many that take so many different variables into consideration. Like I said, if I knew then what I know now, I would've been doing that this whole time. So, and you'd be sitting across the table from a celebrity right now. Yeah, <laughs> what kind of am? You're a local celebrity, people know you. Uh, I'm working on it anyway. I can bring up your, your name to pretty much anybody. <laughs> oh, it's Andy Fleming. That's pretty cool. Um, so when, when you do, when you're a coordinator for mm-hmm. Dave Ramsey, I don't know what's, what's all, uh, included in those responsibilities, but like, do you see any crossover from what, like what you do for a living and what you're doing with Dave Ramsey? Obviously it's financially focused and helping people to you know get their finances in, in, in order right. so they can have a prosperous life for the future. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that, and what you're doing in, in the insurance agency, do you see any overlap and what that is? Every day. Really? For multiple reasons. Mm-hmm. Number one, Dave Ramsey's gotten me out of debt twice. Once in my first marriage, I remarried, had a little debt, went through the course again, out of debt again. Right. right. Mm-hmm. And I just want to be able to show others how easy it is. I mean, it's easier said than done. I get that. And everybody's situation is different. Mm-hmm. But if you follow Dave's techniques, as I've done twice in two totally separate situations, and it works, then it can work for you too. Not everybody's got to have debt. And so Dave is real good about going into biblical examples about mm-hmm. how and why we should not even be in debt. The, the gatherer, the hunter is slave to the gatherer, delivered to the hand of the fowler or something like that. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, the insurance agency that I work for over at Fraser were endorsed by Dave Ramsey. And so, for example, if somebody's on Dave's website and Dave offers, hey, you know, if you're looking for a local endorsed provider, you know, I've got a list of people here that match your area. Frazier Insurance is in Central Arkansas. Wow. And so when people call and they say that they're Dave Ramsey, well, I can say the word debt snowball, for example. Mm-hmm. Uh, or I can say any sort of, I call it Dave lingo. And they know what I'm talking about. Sure, yeah. So that overlap is completely there. And those are our customers that they're not looking for the cheapest of the cheapest auto insurance. Because everybody wants the cheapest of the cheapest per right, month right. until you run into an 18-wheeler. Or you <laughs> run into something expensive. Suddenly, you want to. Yeah, you, you want, want more the, coverage and you yeah. want more everything. Absolutely. So, yeah. It's just a counseling game at the time of quoting it for you. Sure. Mm-hmm. I bet that helps. And they're actually, if somebody did have debt, you know, that they were dealing with, which most people do, on mm-hmm. whether it's, you know, uh, paying for college still yep. or, you know, something, something that happened previously, like you said. Um, I think Dave Ramsey himself had to follow the steps twice because he, he did. He, he was like a millionaire and then lost it all. Lost had it to, all. Yeah, had to go back through the baby steps and just yep. work his way up. Um, he sure did. But yeah, so I'm sure that finding the right plan for them as far as insurance would definitely help them get more funds so that they can start paying off that debt and start of, instead of making it a snowball. 
You know what I mean? Uh, we start melting it down a little bit. Absolutely, because we cannot see the future. Who knew that COVID was going to come this year? Right. At this time last year, nobody did. Out of the blue. But you know what? Thank God we had no debt. Yeah. If we had debt, oh man, it would have been that much tighter. Sure. And a lot more stressful mm-hmm. for everybody in my family because when mommy and daddy stressed out, a lot of times the kids can feel it too, but Absolutely. they didn't. Right. So, give a lot of credit for that. Absolutely. Um, you use, okay, so we brought up social media a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know, I know that you're a big networker as far as like, you're an in-person kind of guy. Yes. You know, like you're a hugger. You talked yep. about that. You're a hugger, a, a handshaker, and a foot tapper occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, that's right. How much do you rely on social media? I don't know. There's lots of you know different leads groups and things that were sort of shut down for a while and only doing Zoom, which mm-hmm. makes it sort of difficult to do the in person thing. But like since you've had to pull back a little bit, I know we're getting back into going back into the chambers and mm-hmm. BNI groups and things like that. But how was it like just having to rely more on social media for you personally? Needless to say, though, Ty, it, it's not the same. Yeah. You know, especially if you're an in person kind of guy. Or girl but it's better than nothing because I have still been able to give and receive leads referrals and whatever through zoom and so had I not been there there's so much that I would have missed out on sure because whether it's BNI or any sort of a leads group you know there's a diverse selection of companies in there and if somebody says hey you know I'm looking for a trucking industry oh well, I just put in force a trucker last week let me right. call him and, and get you guys connected yeah you know, and that's what, why it's such a small world because everybody knows somebody that you need and need mm-hmm. to be in touch with. So it's it's definitely impacted, but not all the way down to nothing. It's right. been better than nothing for sure. It's more inconvenient. Let me take that back. It's more convenient because you don't even have to get out of bed. You can always tell when folks, especially women, they won't turn on their camera. They're like, I'm sorry, I haven't put on my makeup. And so that's the convenient side of it. Sure. The inconvenient side is is getting to sit around a table and pass those leads and referrals. And then after the meeting's over, the networking continues. The in-person, personable networking continues. And that's what I've missed and can't wait to right. get back to, which I think is about to start happening. It has a little Fingers bit. Crossed. I know yes. uh, yeah, our leads group is going to be meeting up in, in the chamber next month. Yep. Uh, the FYIs are coming back. And that's so, right. Yeah, things like that. And so with Zoom, uh, it's just unpredictable about how it's going to go. And mm-hmm. I mean, the, the favor, I mean, the, the odds are against you. You know what I mean? When, when right. you're working at Zoom, if you don't have the personal connection where you can meet eye to eye. Mm-hmm. You don't know if that person's actually looking at the camera or looking at you know something else on Facebook while they're actually in a Zoom meeting. You know what I mean? I've done it. Yeah, I have too. I've, <laughs> I've been there, so I know what it is. And plus, if two people are, are talking at the same time, it just right. kind of sounds like an awkward, chaotic mess. Yes. But when you're in a room full of people, you can kind of sort it out a lot easier. Yeah. But I'm thankful that we've had Zoom and Teams and other ways of sure. social communicating. Yeah, it gave us something. You know, what I mean? like if I had my headset on or somebody else has their speakers turned on for their computer or something, like it throws me off when I'm speaking and like I can hear myself echo just a little bit and it's, yeah. I'm, not, I'm having to stop and like reevaluate what I'm saying. <laughs> it's weird. But yeah, uh, a lot of people get discouraged about even showing up to those Zoom meetings. I know like mm-hmm. B&I groups, leads meetings, all those things have like uh, been completely reduced because there's some people that just don't want to do Zoom. They're like, ah, what's, people, the, what's the sense of it? People are just ready to get back to normal yes, or whatever the new normal is going to be. Right, right. They miss the in-person. And honestly, people are just tired of COVID. Mm-hmm. They're tired of the face masks. They're tired of six feet between each other. They're tired of... You know, you go to Walmart and somebody's without a face mask. Well, suddenly they're looked at like the awkward one, right. not the one with the face mask sure. on. So people are just done with it. Yeah. Hopefully it'll be over with soon. I'm just <laughs> Yeah. We can hope. We, we can hope. hope. I don't know how, as we approach fall and, you know, getting into flu season, I don't, I don't know. But on a kind of a related note, I was having a conversation with some other um, business owners last night via Zoom. And we were talking <laughs> about how... You know, in some instances, it seems like people have gotten Zoom happy, like overzealous with the Zoom because there's certain things that used to be an email or mm-hmm. like a, maybe a quick conference call. And now it's a Zoom. Let's just hop on a quick 30 minute Zoom. And mm-hmm. it's kind of like, well, can we like this could just be an email. It goes back to the like, oh, this meeting, you know, the meeting that could have been an email well, like this, the Zoom call that could have been an email. So mm-hmm. I think that's kind of an interesting dynamic is because. You know, we went into COVID and it was very unexpected. And then everyone was like, okay, well, we can Zoom and we Mm -hmm. can, it can kind of save some of that face-to-face interactions that we need. 
And then they just kept pushing it and integrating it into everything, even where you know before we weren't even seeing each other face to face. Like right. let's just do it. So I think that's kind of been an interesting dynamic that um, I've seen in some places where some people have kind of gotten Zoom happy. Yep. And it's kind of like, well, this could have been a phone call or an email. It could be recorded and retrieved easily. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that way you can be like, well, you said back on Saturday. No, I didn't. Well, I've got you, your voice, but I've also got you on the Zoom camera yeah. saying right. that you said that. You exactly. Know? So I can see that as well. Yeah, there's that too. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, it's it's sort of opened up different events that I normally wouldn't be able to go to. And stuff yeah, there's so, that. Yeah, like I'm, I'm, so I'm super nerdy. If you probably know that, and so I'm into comic books and stuff like that. So like the comic cons, they've all been shut down, and like the big movie events and things like that. But so they started doing like virtual, you know, uh, cons and conferences mm-hmm. and things like that. And so like even uh, some of the BNI networking things I've been a part of, mm-hmm. and some some of the huge you know events that you would have to you know pay three to five hundred dollars for a ticket to go to you know somewhere in arizona or you know new mm-hmm. mexico or something to some big hotel lobby and be a part of it and now you can actually just have it for free right there in your you know your, you bed, s- your bedroom or your computer and so you're able to watch those things do you still dress up as mario brothers or I mean, you know, storm troopers for the zoom hey, meeting hey you can you can, uh, can you? you can dress up if you want to that's just everyday yeah. life though, the you know, so. <laughs> there you go. absolutely there's people that were doing that i think disney's doing that right now disney plus is is having a contest for like people that had the best Halloween uh, you know costume mm-hmm. and you send it to them and they have a virtual thing that's a good idea and actually. They yeah I mean it is it opens up that's that's my point is that it, it's a uh, it's sort of breaking broken us out of a mindset that we had before mm-hmm. um, you know some some organizations and people were still stuck in like the the ways before we had the technology to do these mm-hmm. things but sure. now we can we realize we can use these as tools to mm-hmm. get more people involved to grow our network, grow our, our, you know, our worth and grow our, you know, businesses for the future. Or like if you're trying to make an impact with an event, now you can reach a larger audience. And so, um, it's, it's pretty interesting to see how, how forward moving, you know, especially Arkansas, cause we're, oh, yeah. we're kind of behind the times. Right. And so anything that happens in California, it reaches us in about five or eight years later. <laughs> Are the um, fires put out yet? Oh, yeah. I don't know. Wait five days. We'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll get the news. Exactly. But at least there was Zoom. Yeah. Because if not, where would all of these groups and, and networking groups be? Right. Mm-hmm. It's because of a Zoom meeting. I'm sitting here across from you right now. Sure. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. So it's definitely had its pros and cons for yeah. sure. But I definitely think it's had more pros than cons. Mm-hmm. I think we'll see yeah. maybe in the future when we get to that new normal, that may look like something like, you know, Ty's talking about these, you know, these conferences and things that have kind of had to adapt on the fly, I think we'll kind of maybe see some hybrid models yes. kind of being developed. Once things open up a little bit more and you can have some of the in-person conferences and gatherings, I think there's still going to be more hybrid approach to incorporating virtual with all of that so that, you know, either to make it more accessible to people or just kind of to expand the experience. And that's what one thing we've done at church is even though we've started meeting back in person again, uh uh-huh the Facebook live feeds still continue because sure. number one, not everybody's ready to come back yet. And that's fine. I get it. Right. Uh, underlying conditions, whatever the case may be, but also it's broadcast worldwide. Exactly. You so know? it reaches more people or that's right. You know, and even for like, I know a lot of people that move away from a town, you know, this was my church when I was living here and now I'm, you know, several States away and I can't just go, you know, across country every Sunday just that's to right. go see service. But now I can see it online. And that's you're actually right. in the auditorium. Right, right, right. That's right. Yep. So that's amazing how we are building hybrid models of those for the yes. future. Um, and so let's talk a little bit about where you want to take yourself your business for the future uh what is what is the big big picture for andy fleming where does he want to be you know the big stay, picture do you want to stay in the same spot you're at right now or do you want to continue growing maybe on your own agency in the future or grow fraser to be bigger i don't know What's oh i'd love for fraser to be bigger and honestly since i have been an agency owner in the past yeah. i'm more comfortable now where i'm at as working for an owner yeah so to answer your question i would rather stay where i'm at now mm-hmm because we are growing together as a team, as an agency or whatever, everybody, we've got a smooth flow sure. of how everything happens. I didn't have that because when I was introduced to insurance, I was an owner. I think that I should have begun as a novice producer, mm-hmm. learn the ropes first, get some hands-on and some visual experience, some customer service, then maybe work your way up to an owner. But since I was kind of thrown in as an owner, sure. it's not that I've gone backwards at all. 
Yeah. I make more money now as a producer than I ever did as an agency owner. I right. simply just didn't know what I was doing. But as far as the big picture, I mean, we're always implementing new things. We're always trying to see what we can do to help our current customers at, at renewal. Of course, this COVID's been going on for what, eight, seven, eight months now? Yeah. I've been with Fraser Insurance for a year. Had there not been COVID, then we would have continued to see what we can do to grow together as an mm-hmm. agency yeah. and maybe have multiple locations. I'm not sure what their exact plans are, but right. I have no interest on being out on my own. Been there, done that, happy where I'm at. So <laughs> Andy with Frazier all the way. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, that's great. Well, so what would you, what advice would you give somebody that was trying to open their own business then? You, you ran into a lot of things that I guess gave you trouble and all. Like in hindsight, like you said, it's always so much clearer when you look backwards. Mm-hmm. But because uh, you, you know so much more now and you're more experienced as an agent working for someone else. But right. uh, when you own your own agency, just fresh into it and you just you go out there and do that. So what, what would be, I guess, your advice for somebody that doesn't have a lot of experience in something, but they want to open their own business doing this? Huh. You ever been on dating somebody and I'm like, well, before you get married, make sure you, you date for a year, right? <laughs> right. Go through all of the holidays, meet, meet her family first. Right. And then after you circled around the sun one time, if you still feel the same way about her, then it's a fit. I think that would be my best piece of advice for a brand new agency owner just because, and I'm speaking from experience here, because if you start out as a producer, you will learn things that you will not learn as an owner. Mm. And, and if you do, it's going to be, you might end up shutting your doors, as I have done. And I'm glad I did now. But if you could start out as a producer working for an owner with any company, preferably independent, no, don't. <laughs> That'll be competition, right? <laughs> then you'll learn the hands-on ropes that you need, you'll, the skills, the lingo, the experience, and the knowledge that you need. That way you don't look like a fool mm-hmm. when you do open up your doors and you have no idea what you're doing. Right. And when I say look like a fool, you don't want your customer coming in here teaching you things about basic insurance that you didn't already know. Right. That would be just one little piece of advice for me. Absolutely. Give it a year. No, that's Just great. like you did when you were dating. Take a trip around the sun with the producer, <laughs> and then if you still feel the same way about insurance after yes. that, hey, great. Go for it. Yeah. Because if I knew then what I know now, that's what I would have done. I would have never started out as an owner. Absolutely. And that's the conversation that, you know, that Whitney and I have with, you know, clients when they come mm-hmm. in here or people that are just starting out with a business. It's, well, I didn't realize there was so much to it. That's because, right. Because, I mean, there is. there's the legal side of, you know, registering your business and get your EIN oh, yeah. number. Uh, you got to open your bank account. Make sure you have contracts or non-disclosure agreements and uh, errors and omissions yeah. just everything that I didn't know what it was when I was told to get it okay I got it but I don't know what it is exactly yeah, type exactly. deal but and then handling their own marketing which you know is can be anything from you know of course everybody has a digital presence these days and so it's got to right. be social media accounts you knowing however many platforms you're going to run it on your website and oh, plus, yeah. plus you're answering phones you're doing your own customer service you know what I mean people that are trying to do things single handedly if you don't have the funds for it because most small businesses when they start out they're trying to bootstrap yeah. from the you know that was me from the bottom up as a father to six children I've got little to no room for error here mm-hmm. especially to go backwards and pay sure but when I first got into the industry I didn't know what a leads group was. I'd right. never heard of Ty King. Yeah. You know, so all of these, the, the customer base, the referral base that I have now, there was nothing. Sure. I just had to reach out to people that I knew. Hey, I'm an insurance agent now. Wait a minute, Andy, you were in the nuclear field last <laughs> week. What's it going to be next week? Had to go through all of that. So yeah. I've been in it for almost five years now and in it to stay. So awesome. anyway. You were just radioactive last week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right. I had to get one of my third arms cut off (laughs) no it can add up quick though because you Mm -hmm. don't even think about sometimes you know oh i'm supposed to be running an agency you're building this business and it's like oh well i'm supposed to also i got to do my books and i got to do my marketing and i got to do this and all this and and then you get into that like well how am i going to run my business if i'm doing all these other things it can really add up and it can be a lot to to have all that Jug- that's how I just tend to describe it. it's like a juggling act because you're just sitting here trying to run your business and keep up with your marketing keep up with your family and keep up with everything yep. and you know you're just kind of waiting waiting to drop the ball it's like what's what's gonna get yep. get missed you know what and the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over exactly. again exactly mm-hmm. and for the very same reason that you have insurance because yep. you don't know when something's going to happen in the future uh, oh yeah uh, some big Thing that's out of your control could be a natural disaster, could be a family disaster, could be you know just anything. Somebody gets sick all of a sudden, and like that much, 
bigger of a chunk of your time is now having to be dedicated towards that thing and you don't have it to, to give to your business That's or right. even like run the services that you opened your business to provide in the first oh, yeah. place you know <laughs> so yep. it's uh it can go down the well, drain or, you know, we, Felicia's not in here right now but you know she talks a lot about cash flow and cash mm-hmm. reserves and a lot of businesses don't have cash reserves and something like COVID hits and you've got to shut your doors do you have cash reserves to like keep your business afloat until this thing passes because none of us expected this this all kind of came at us and we we're like oh what mm-hmm. so it's kind of you've got to come up out with your business with a strategy and even though i know a lot of people are trying to bootstrap it it's there's got to be a strategy to it oh absolutely because otherwise you are going to put yourself one whether it's a global pandemic or you break your leg and maybe you're you're a service provider that your job is to go out into the field and provide a service and now you've broken a leg and you can't do that. I mean, there's a lot that could happen. And so, you know, it's just kind of really got to kind of plan for all, all inevitabilities. That's what I try to tell people who come into the office and they're like, Andy, I just want the cheapest of the cheapest insurance, just enough to say I'm insured, right? Right. And for those people, I always try to counsel them or recommend, you know, this is what you're wanting, which is a stripped down, I call it a skeleton policy. You're not really covered for anything. You've got enough insurance to say you've got, okay, great, Andy, that's, that's what I want, you know, $25 a month. <laughs> but like I said a minute ago, you run into a Corvette or a Cadillac or something uh-huh. like that. Suddenly you, you wish that you hadn't requested the cheapest of the cheapest that we have to offer. Absolutely. With no extras on there. So those extras are not on there to provide an agent with extra commission or anything like that. It benefits you as the insured because Whitney, like you were saying, you just, we never saw this COVID coming. Mm. You know, maybe you didn't see that 18 wheeler coming or maybe you didn't see what fill in the blank, but that's why the insurance is there. Yeah. The transfer of risk. Absolutely. So for a reason. Happens all the time. Yeah. (laughs) The things you can't plan for. That's right. So you uh, put, plans in place in case something ever for happens because you know that it's going to exactly for the unforeseen yep that's awesome well Andy it's been a pleasure having you on I've enjoyed it I'm not going to keep you on too long and you gave a lot of really great information especially towards you know uh, getting knowledge as someone in the field rather than somebody that owns a business that you know is a controller in the field right uh, the importance of you know working your way up from the bottom and so that's that I have that's incredibly yeah absolutely you have from yeah. the bottom yeah absolutely and uh, I'll put in the links for the show uh, how people can get in contact with you and get in contact with Fraser Insurance perfect um, and we'll uh, get that all together and put it in there I'll expect to see your name come across my desk sometime soon yes absolutely it should <laughs> okay, buddy. you all may right, already thanks. have one but there's that and he's got fancy cards. Fancy, got fancy, fancy cards. cards. He's got his little fakes on them. I do. And all of that is because of Vistaprint. I didn't even have to go there through somebody. Exp- well, actually, you do business cards, don't you? <laughs> he's like, well, let me put my foot in my mouth. Okay. Uh, yeah. I do. I do. I may have to give you a call for those as well. Okay. Well, on that note, uh, be sure to check out our channel on YouTube where we'll be posting this podcast. And if you are an audio listener, you can listen on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or anywhere that you'd like to listen to your podcasts that are distributed around the globe. And next week, we'll have another guest. I don't really know how to uh, just tell you the, the name of anybody just right now. So It's, it's, a, secret it's a secret surprise. I'll tune in next week to find out. Yeah, I never like to spoil it. Now. I always like to keep that up my sleeve a little bit. So uh, Until next time, I'm going to say bye. Andy, I'm going to say bye. All right, guys. Thank you for having me. Look forward to seeing you. All right. <laughs>